Hello, lovelies. Happy, happy Wednesday. I hope you all are doing well out there in the world. We are having crazy weather here in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, let me see if I can adjust my camera a little. It's doing that thing again. Sorry, y'all. All right, that's a little bit better. Hello. Hello out there. Who's out there? Check in with me. Say hi. Let me know you're there. Today is letter J day. <laughs> so, uh, pour myself a little cup of water here. Well, hello. Oh, hi, Tim. Hey, hey, girl. How you doing? <coughs> All right, so let me do my, my start up here. Hello and welcome. My name is Kyla Givehand, and welcome to my month of vlogging, where I am going on YouTube live um, every day this month, because I'm clearly a crazy person. Um, so, so for those of you who've been following along, welcome back. For those of you who are here for the very first time, you have entered on day 10, which is letter J. And I am talking about, um, I'm doing a series called the ABCs of me. And every day I come on and I talk about the things that I love and I share some stuff. Maybe we make some things. It just depends on what my mood is telling me. Thanks babe, for the day. Um, <clears throat> it is raw, uncut unedited, mostly unfiltered, uh, <laughs> just raw, real me saying, I don't know, is this thing on? I'm going to see who all is still following along here on uh, YouTube. I suspect I'll lose a few folks, gain a few folks, but we will figure it all out by the end of the month where we are. And hopefully my goal is to know exactly how I want to continue to show up here or if I want to continue to show up on this platform. But the one thing I know for sure is I've been missing y'all over here. And so here I am saying, hey, let's let's get creative together. Let's make some stuff. Let's talk about things. So up to this point, we've talked about a lot of things, y'all. I've been trying to keep a little running list every day of the things we've been talking about. I've been doing pretty good, but <clears throat> I told y'all on day one, I'm not perfect. So don't come here looking for perfect. You're not going to get it. Um, so here's some of the things we talked about so far. We've talked about accordion books. In fact, we made an accordion book together live. Uh, we talked about art, being an artist, affirmations, authenticity, acrylic paints, astrology, the academy that my husband and I run. We talked about Apple a day. That was a funny <laughs> Yeah, y'all, I have a whole thing going on with apples right now. Um, talked about Amherst writers, and I talked a little bit about my ADD, ADHD stuff. Um, talked about, uh, I think I talked a little about Aries that day. And then there are a couple things I didn't get to hit on that'll come back in those last few days of the month. Because we got 26 letters, but we have 30 days. So those last few days will be the overflow days where I go back and I look at the things I intended to talk about, but ran out of time. Because y'all know. I was raised by a chatty Gemini mama and I can talk all day. I'm working on it. Um, okay. <laughs> day B, we talked about book binding, talked about being a business owner, talked a little bit about Bargello. Uh, we talked about loving bags and those of us who feel like we're bag ladies. Um, and if you don't know the reference, go listen to Erica Badu's Bag Lady bag lady yeah i'm not gonna try to sing it for you um we talked about and made a back-to-back -back book i told you about some of the books i was reading i'm currently reading we talked about black and white art and black and white decks i didn't really talk about branding but i'll come back to that a little bit letter day c we talked about collage a little bit about soul collage a little bit about fabric collage we talked about creativity. We didn't get to talk about chakras, so I'm going to come back to that one. We talked a little about it during human design, but not much. Um, <clears throat> talked about coaching, talked about community, creative writing, canvas journals. I showed you a ton of canvas journals. 
didn't talk about chanting much, but we'll circle back. Let's see. Letter day D. We made, we didn't make a book, but we talked about domino journals. I showed you my little, my little itty bitty domino journals. And I showed you how to get some of them, get your dominoes and repurpose them. In fact, we made a little set of domino oracle. I'm really proud of my little domino oracle set. My little prototype. Listen, we made a little prototype, y'all, of a little oracle deck, a little oracle set using dominoes that we painted and did things to. So um, this is my little prototype. I said I was going to get me a new batch of dominoes and see if I can't do something um, a little more, a little less prototypey, a little more uh, refined. Talked about doodling a tiny bit. Not enough, though. Talked a little bit about divination, drawing. Um, I think I got the most questions via email after this session because you all were like, wait, what's divination? And how do you do? And what do you and what's the deconditioning again? Y'all had some great questions. Mostly all I responded to via email. Some of them I answered on on air the next day. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of the ones from D that are going to come back because I think I spent a lot of time doing the domino journals and not a lot of time talking about the other things. So A, B, C, D, E. We talked a little bit about, I didn't talk a lot about exercise because listen, mm, mm, that's all I'm going to say about that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, we did talk about energy work, entrepreneurship, lots of time on embroidery. I showed you all the different unfinished projects that I have going on. <laughs> uh, talked a little bit about emotional wellness and endurance. We talked a lot about endurance, enthusiasm, excitement. Talked a little bit about some elements in astrology, a little bit about some uh, eclipse stuff. Did I say I don't like email? I'm on, I just need to tell you all that again. I don't mean email. We are not friends. I'm not even trying to be friends with email, just to be clear. <laughs> uh, letter day F. Of course, we talked about fountain pens. In fact, I think that's pretty much all we talked about on fountain pen day is fountain pens on F day. F day is fountain pen day. We did talk about some fabric books. I showed a few. I did show some. OK, I guess we talked about more than French than fountain pens. I did show and talk about fabric books, French link books, flower fold books, flexagon books, fan books, French door books, flaps and flip outs, faces. And I showed a bunch of my faces. Talk about a vulnerability hangover after day F. Y'all, I had a serious vulnerability hangover showing all these faces of mine. And I didn't even show all of them. I was thinking about that after the fact. I was like, man, I have a bunch of other faces I didn't show. Not that I'm like super excited about them or anything. I mean, I love all my faces. Don't get me wrong. But just the fact that I usually don't show people my faces because I don't feel very confident in them. But I showed them to y'all. So listen. I'm trying to just show up full me, full self. That's real talk. And we didn't do any French knots. So maybe that'll come back at the end of the month. And I think what's missing from this list is flag books, flag and fan. We did both. All right. Letter G day. I'm missing my little sheet. I don't know what my little strip is for letter G <clears throat> day. But it's somewhere around here. I'll find it. I'm not going to pause and look for it in this moment, but here's some of the things I remember about letter G day. Green smoothies. I think a tiny bit. I talked about that. I did a ridiculous amount of conversation around glue. Ugh, so much glue talk. <laughs> I talked about um, a little bit. Mm, you know what? I forgot to talk about and I went to the next day and talked about it. So I'll say that. All right. So, yeah, G day, we did jelly plate printing a whole bunch of it, a whole, 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 whole bunch of it. <laughs> a whole bunch of it um and we loved it we had fun i had fun i hope y'all have fun too um what else did we do da -da 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 -da. then i think that i think we spent the bulk of the time that day talking about jelly plate printing and doing that and i feel like i talked about other stuff y'all but i don't remember what it was so i'm gonna just say we did some jelly plate printing we talked about glue that's where we are letter h day we talked about happiness we talked about um, human design. 
I didn't talk about herb, herbalism, uh, herbalism, uh, hair journey or hardcover journals as much as I wanted to. So that'll come back towards the end of the month. Um, but I went back to letter J letter day G on H day. And I talked about grits tour with Tiffany and I. Hi, Tiff again. I see you in there. So I talked about the grits tour a little bit, talked about gratitude, talked about, um, there was another G. Someone sent me a message and was like, I can't believe you didn't talk about Gordon Ramsay. You love Next Level Chef. Um, I do love Next Level Chef. Uh, and so I talked a little bit about Gordon Ramsay and Next Level Chef in day H. That same person was like, you didn't talk about, oh, what was it, y'all? There were like three things. That person was like, you didn't talk about this, this, and this. Um, so I don't remember all the things, but we we brought some of the G stuff back in the H day. And then yesterday was day I. We talked about inks. Y'all see the little heart next to inks. We spent a lot of time. I showed y'all a lot of inks. All the fountain pen inks. All of them. Okay, not really all of them. <laughs> a lot of them. I showed you a lot of them. Because after we got off, I was like, ooh, I have so many more fountain pen inks. I could have shown them. But we also had to make time for the acrylic inks. And the calligraphy inks. So I tried to give them a little bit of time too. But mostly we talked about fountain pen inks. Because well. You didn't just meet me. If you did. Welcome to my world. It's all about fountain pens. <laughs> and fountain pen ink. That's my jam. We talked a little bit about intuition. And intentions. And a lot about imposter syndrome at the end. Um, and I got lots of messages from you all. After this one. So thank you. Um, about. Just really needing to hear about imposter syndrome from a different point of view and a different perspective. So thank you for your notes. They were super helpful. Um, yeah, it was super helpful to get those from you all because sometimes I get off the lives and I'm like, did I say anything that made any sense to anybody? And so getting your notes back uh, were, was really beautiful. So thank you. Um, what we will move to the end. I didn't spend enough time on indigo because indigo, y'all, is my color of the year this year, by the way. Um, and I didn't spend enough time talking about that. So I'll bring it back towards the end. And I didn't talk about idea overload, but let me just give you a little hint. I'm literally doing an ABCs of me series where I'm showing up every single day and talking about all the things. If that is not idea overload, I don't know what is, but we'll circle back to that anyway, because I do have a different um, perspective from which I want to come in relationship to um, idea overload. So we'll come back to that. Uh, let's talk about letter day J and what I'm going to bring to the conversation for day J. I mean, the obvious journals. Is that not the, op the most obvious thing? So then we have to also talk about journaling. And under that, I would think, you know, we can say art journaling, junk journaling, <clears throat> visual journaling, you know, creative journaling. I mean, I could make up a whole bunch of the names here, but we'll just leave it at that for now. I thought it might be interesting to talk about um, my current journals. And I'm going to go ahead and put out a thing right here that says, don't judge me when I tell you how many journals I have going at once. Save your judgment. Don't want it. OK. Um, what else, y'all? I need some more J's. Give me J's. I don't I don't know what other J's really. Um, oh, 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 I already know. Let's talk about juicing. Because um, that's a big part of my life. Juicing. I don't do it as much as I want to do it, but I do it. We do it a lot around here. All right. I need some more J's. I'm going to sip a little bit of tea here. I'm having peppermint tea. What y'all having over there? Mm. Christina, girl, thank you. Thank you for that. Let's talk about Jupiter, people. Let us talk about Jupiter. Um, <clears throat> any other J's for me out there? All right, let me check the chat here. Um, Christina says, hi, from, hey, from San Antonio, Texas. I'm glad this is your first time getting with us live. Glad you're here. Um, Tiff says, love you and hearing your voice makes me happy, sis. Having you here means the world. Thank you. 
because I know what your life looks like and you can't you listen. We have to be real stingy with our time sometimes. And so I feel honored that you're giving me some of your time. Love you. Thank you. Um, hey, Roseanne, welcome back. Thank you for being a tried and true this week. You've been awesome. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> Tiff says you're 50. You don't need a filter. Woo! <laughs> That's right. Um, and we do love our Gemini energy. Um, oh, goodness. My, between my mother and Tiffany, I don't know if I would ever get a word in if in the middle of the two of them. <laughs> in the best of ways, though. I love my Gemini. My Gemini ladies. And yes, it's grits time again. And thank you, my faces. Uh, Tiffany is um, a really big part of me having more confidence than I've ever had before in doing faces. Um, I actually took a class that Tiffany teaches um, on making faces, and it was ridiculously helpful. Tiff, I don't remember the name of it in this moment. It's been a minute. Remind me of the name. Why well, I want to say soulful faces, but I don't think that's right. Soulful reflections. Soulful reflect. What's the name of your face class, please? And thank you. Mm. But I took that class and it actually helped me break out of this idea that a face had to be like super realistic and photo realistic. And yeah, just like here, here are some fun ways to make faces go do it. And um, man, that was that was pretty amazing. Uh, so that was a big help. And then every time we have soulfully wrong quirky, which you all will hear about on letter day S, Tiffany always teaches some sort of face. And also in the grits tour, also taught some sort of face, right? So that has really been a huge help for me, honestly, in getting breaking out of my my fear of faces. So Tiff, thank you for what you do in the world, sis. Uh, Damon, did you really say jalapenos <laughs> for letter J? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing it. I love it. Um, hi, Deidre. Welcome. Glad you're here live. Hi, Angelisa. Welcome back. Um, yay. I'm glad you're here. Uh, so, yes, yeah, Soulful Reflections was the name. All right. So let's do what we do at the beginning of every session. We pull some cards. Let me move my stuff all around here. Try not to spill things because, you know, I will. You know, I thought I had a deck out that I was going to use today, but well, hmm, I don't know what I did with this. So let me. Y'all know I always have some sort of deck prototype going on. Let me look. <clears throat> what sex do I have handy? Y'all, I seriously have about um, I seriously have about 20 decks <laughs> in process, <laughs> in progress. Did I put words on all of these? I didn't. All right. So I have to show y'all some more of my decks as we as we go. But right now. I'm going to grab one out of my drawer and it's not, I've been trying to do ones that have, um, hold on. I've been trying to do decks that have the name or the theme, something to do with the same letter we're working on for the day. But uh, yeah, that's not going to work for today. So I'm going to go with this one. This is by one of my art pals, Lizzie. And um, it's a really great deck. It's called Unscripted. It's another little square, square deck. I was trying to find, yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Um, Lizzie Rusinko. Really awesome. I think her shop might be on hiatus right now. Um, I think she's got some stuff she's working on behind the scenes. And I think she might have put her deck on um, or her, her shop on hold for a bit. But <clears throat> it's a really cool little deck with lots of beautiful sayings. But it is hand lettered, hand illustrated. Um, and it's all about inspiring you to live a life 
that is uniquely yours, which is right in alignment with the work that I do in the world. I want people to be their true, most authentic, most whew, powerful, empowered selves. And so everything I do is really in service of helping people figure out who the heck they are in this great big world that is always trying to tell us who we should be. And so that's why I do things like work with tarot, astrology, human design. I want you to have all the tools at your disposal to know yourself on a deep level. So let's pull a card. Um, we've been pulling two, I think. So we'll pull one for like, what do I need to know me personally um, during this session? And then one for the collective, for those of you here live and for those of you watching on the replay. So let's see what we got. Unscripted. And I love this, right? This The name of this um, little deck. I love unscripted. And also my hands are clearly. All right. That won't be for me. And this one will be for the collective. All right. So here's what's for me. Ooh, apparently I need a lot today here. What are you actually doing if all you're ever doing is trying to be done with whatever you're doing? <laughs> oh, I love this so much. All right. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. Roseanne, it is Unscripted by Lizzie Rusinko. And that's spelled R-U-S-S-I-N-K-O. All right. Here's the one for everybody else. Boom. Stay curious. Ah, did we get something like this earlier this month? I'm going to have to go back and look at my, uh, I've been tra I've been keeping track of the cards every day. I'm going to have to go back and look. I feel like it because I feel like I ended up saying something about my favorite scene from Ted Lasso was when he was like, yeah, they were never curious. They just were judging the whole bar scene uh, where he's um, shooting darts. I feel like we got another card this week that was about staying curious. I can't remember. Ah, all right. I see some new folks have joined us. Hello and welcome. Um, Evelyn. Hey, lovely. Good to see you. I'm thrilled you caught me live too. I'm glad you're here. Uh, where can we get decks like mine? Um, I have some decks that I do sell. Uh, some of them are still in prototype phase, so they're not actually for sale yet. Um, but I will make sure I put links in the description <clears throat> of the replays so you can know where to go and get them. And um, what else we got there? Hi. Oh, hi, Rena. How you doing? Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. I feel like um, we were on a live together recently. Maybe Barb's. I don't know. I don't remember. But anyway, I'm glad to see your name pop up. Hi. Um, yeah, that Ted Lasso. Uh, okay, so here's our cards for the day. This one's mine, and I'm going to come back to it in a second here. This one is for all of us. Stay curious. Like, to me, um, this is something that we talk about a lot in Life Alchemy Academy, in my pull pen paint classes, um, in any of the classes where I'm really trying to get people to dig into who they are, in my soul collage work, all of that. Your curiosity, if you if you don't have that, um, if you're not curious, if you're not questioning, if you're not asking what if, what if, what if, what if, then it's likely um, that you're missing out on the tons of magic and inspiration that's right there in front of you. So you have to stay curious. Right? Stay curious. All right. So this one, I'm going to read this out again because it's good. And even though it's for me, I know some of y'all out there can relate to this. What are you actually doing if all you're ever doing is trying to be done with whatever you're doing? <laughs> this is me an email. This is me an email. All I'm ever doing with email is trying to be done with email. <laughs> I open email trying to be done with email. Oh, y'all listen. I can't be the only one, not just with email, but just with like, there are certain things in our lives that you're doing and in the middle of doing them, all you really want to be doing is being done with them. Dishes, laundry, grocery shopping, email. Those are my big four right there. When I'm doing them, I just want to be done doing them. <laughs> I want to be done with it. Yeah. But email is definitely. Oh, oh, let 
taxes. Put taxes on that list. Email, taxes, laundry, dishes. What was the other one I said? Hmm. Any admin work, really. I don't like doing admin work. Um, <laughs> Suzanne says, yes, yeah, sometimes a really long art project. So I'm going to put these two cards over here for us to return back to should we need to. But y'all check out Lizzie. Um, I don't know when her shop's coming back online, but uh, I'll show you some of her cards so you can see what you what you be getting yourself into. So she does this really cool thing where um, if you follow her on Instagram, you can see her using her ruling pen. And I have a ruling pen somewhere around here. I feel like I've shown it to y'all before in the past, not on this series, but in something somewhere that I've done. <laughs> but a ruling pen, I'll see if I can find mine in the midst of all this drama on my desk right now. Um, let's see. But a ruling pen is a special kind of... Uh, it's not really a um, fountain pen, but it's a special kind of pen. Wow, I can't believe that I can't find it. Mm. All right, I'll find it sometime in the next day or two. It'll pop up and be like, all right, here it is. But she uses a ruling pen to do her lettering. And so it gives it a very interesting sort of sort of look. So here are some of her cards. Speak truth to power. You are allowed to rest. You know to be, mm, let's see, what you know to be the truth. Oh, let's start over. Begin with what you know to be the truth. Your dream is not crazy. That part. Even as we are, we are becoming. So she has a lot of good ones. What doesn't bend breaks. We just talked about this in Soul Collage yesterday because we are working in my community right now um, in Life Alchemy. We're, we're working with the theme of stability. And in Soul Collage, in my Soul Seas membership, we talked about stability and flexibility and where those two live together. And uh, one of our practitioners, hi, Tina, was like, yeah, flexibility and stability. Like, can those things live in the same space? And I was like, yeah, you know, we have to be strong and we have to stand firm and stand true to who we are but we also have to be flexible enough that our strength does not break us right we have to be able to bend so we don't break remember that you are sacred you see why i like this deck she speaks my language um, we can do hard things so yeah she has some really great uh, affirming statements in here and this might actually be Deck number two. I think I have two decks from her. Um, so that's Lizzie's deck, unscripted. Grab you one if you can. I don't, I'm not an affiliate. I'm not getting any kickback. I just love what I love, and I don't have a problem promoting the things that I love, especially when I have a real true like affinity for them. Okay, I'm gonna take a little sip of tea here. All right, see you later. Bye, Tiff. Okay, friends, so let's talk about, let's start with, um, let's start with junk journaling because I don't have a lot to say about it. So let's start with that. <laughs> My idea of junk journaling. Hmm. Okay, let's start with this. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, hmm. I'm not an official junk journaler, okay? And I'm saying it that way because I think there are some people out there that are like hardcore junk journalers who have like a definition for what junk journaling is. For me, I don't really, cons I think some people, I know there's a whole camp of people. So let's do it like this. There's the camp of people who are pure purist when it comes to junk journaling and they have a definition and a set you know, list of rules of what it means to be a junk journaler. Then you have people who are like, I'm not calling what I do junk. So they're over here. We're going to put them over here. And then you have the people who are like, um, pretty much everything I do is is junk journaling. And, it, and so we'll put those people over here. All right. So we've got these three, three groups. 
I'm in neither of these groups. Okay. Um, I get what people say, what they mean when they say junk journaling. They're like the stuff that other people might consider junk or the stuff that you originally were going to throw in the trash can. Um, we're going to make some journal. We're going to make some art out of that. So I get that. I get those people who are like, I'm not calling my work junk. I get it. Um, I also think that in a world where we really should just define things for ourselves when it becomes tricky. Like obviously certain things have a definition and that, you know, you got to stay true to that. But in the art world, I really do think that, especially when we start calling ourselves mixed media artists and all that, I really do feel like we have a lot of leeway, a lot of license in poetry. We call it poetic license, right? You have poetic license to do the thing in your poetry that you want to do break the rules, know the rules, but break the rules, right? So I think as mixed media artists, we also have a lot of artistic license and we have to take that. And so I don't have a definition for what junk journaling is. I cannot give you an official definition. I, I don't even want to begin. Now, the other day when I talked about book binding, I did tell you that I have some specific guidelines of what I consider to be a book, a piece of book art versus just a handmade journal. And I do see them differently. But again, that's because I come from a background where there's like formal training and we have had these conversations in, in you know, college level classes and blah, blah, blah. So I come with that lens. But because I don't come from any particular like tradition when it comes to junk journaling, I don't really have any sort of I don't feel any kind of way about it, really. To me, it's whatever you whatever you want it to be. <laughs> so. I'm showing you Kyla Give Hand version of junk journaling and what I call junk journaling. OK, so for me, my regular journals are the, the journals where like the ones I showed you all the other day that were hardbound that are like um, pristine, all white pages, crisp edges. Everything is measured and aligned and, you know, everything looks like it's very refined that I love. And I think for years I've tried to kind of deny myself that, but I really love that. That's what I love. I love crisp edges. I love showing my ability to be precise. I mean, I don't actually have to prove to anybody that I can make messy things. Anybody can do that. I actually, and not that I'm trying to prove anything to, body, to anybody, I'm not, but to myself, I'm proving to myself that I can measure things and I can have things in straight rows and lines and I can be precise and I can refine my work. That's my own personal journey. That's not shade on anybody else. And that doesn't take anything else. That doesn't take anything away from anybody else. I think people should be the artist they're meant to be. And it gets to look the way it gets to look. And I also think we should give ourselves permission to live in both of those worlds, live in the space, do things that are that need to be precise. Like I watch some of these knitting folks and I'm like, yeah, when you're knitting, y'all not just willy nilly all over the place. <laughs> y'all are not willy nilly. Y'all are rows and lines, weavers, rows and lines, crocheters. You getting those loops in the right. I mean, there's precision and refinement to it. Right. I think it's important for us to have things in our lives where we do have order and we have refinement and we show precision. I think there's power in that. I think it sharpens and fine tunes us to things. And then I think we have to give ourselves permission to have places where that does not matter, where it doesn't matter if it's straight, if it's um, precise, if it's measured, if it's anything other than free, expressive art. And so maybe that's in your cooking, right? Maybe you don't follow a recipe. And then there are some people like master bakers who follow to the letter. They measure everything. If it says 20 grams, they got 20 grams. They're taking that knife and they're sliding that flour off until it, that, that uh, measuring device says 20 grams, not 20.1, not 20, not 19.8, 20 right? Because they understand the power of precision when it comes to baking. So I think there are places where it matters, 
but I think there are places where it doesn't. And I think we should have both of those in our lives so that we aren't always in the rigid, everything must be straight and precise and perfect. But we have space to breathe and try new things and experiment and play and mess it up over and over and over and over and over again. Okay, so with all that said, <laughs> Kylie give me a version of junk journaling. Here we go. Um, taking a journal and mixing the papers in it. For me, this is junk journaling. This is like a bunch of um, jelly plate prints that I put together into a journal. All different kinds of paper is super wonka doodle. There is no real like rhyme or reason. I even got pieces that have like the little trim left on them. It's to me, this is what I call junk journaling. Not so much about what goes in the journal, but about what I use to make the journal. So sometimes blank pages, sometimes there's some pocket, here's a pocket. Oh, in fact, this right here should actually be in this little pocket. Um, right. So it's it's to me, junk journaling for me is about mixing and matching papers because this isn't something I would normally do. Normally, I would not have pages already painted and things in my journals. That just isn't my typical style of, of putting together journals. So for me, this is a junk journal where you've got things you know kind of hanging on to each other hanging off the edges i don't have a lot hanging off the edges on this one but i'm going to show you all some others but this is to me junk journaling because it's it's got a bunch of different types of papers in it jelly plate printed things stuff already done and ready for when i come to the journal okay now i know some junk journals look at this and be like girl there's nothing junky about that and that's okay it's fine. I'm not judging what they do, and it's okay if they say that. All right, so that's one example. Um, another example for me is just taking a bunch of um, papers and things. This is one I taught at a retreat some years ago. Um, oh, when was that? 2015, maybe? I think it was 2015 or six. Oh. Damon, when did we do the retreat at the beach? Was it before Barcelona or after? I can't remember. Anyway, it was 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. But this is uh, some canvas. And I these are file folders that I painted and did a bunch of different things on and then just tore them down and made them into pages. So this is, to me, again, this is my definition of junk of a junk journal. I could very much say this is done. It doesn't quite feel done. I mean, I haven't, I don't come back to it very often, but here it is. Right? Just again, another journal with just painted, and then not even pages really. There, this is um, like I said, file folders. You can see the little tabs left in them, even. This was some transfers that I was showing them how to do on packing tape. Um, this is me playing with color, playing with different materials, lots of gesso. I can feel the gesso on these. Um, so lots and lots of that. So just going through. And noticing all of that right so it's a little flip through of that but um, some stenciling all sorts of stuff right so for me again that's another example of junk journaling here's a second one that I did same same sort of style and makeup um, in our let me see what this one is yep again another junk journaling it's like taking some of my jelly plate prints and making Making a little journal from it, from the pages that I just have laying out. Usually the things that I'm like, oh, that didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to. Um, I'll just make a little journal with it. Right? And then this to me becomes a junk journal. And for the longest time, I would not sell my actual journals that I made. But I then started selling these things. I called them scrappy journals 
because it would be from the bit from my scraps, right? From the things that I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to throw this way or keep this. But I realized that people love that. People love kind of getting other people's um, art because, again, one man's trash, another man's treasure, that saying, right? Some people look at certain things and go, man, that's awesome. I could do some great things with that. I'm like, I'm going to trash it. So I started for a while selling um, junk journals. And um, oh, I was looking at that upside down the whole time. <laughs> Doesn't matter, though, right? <laughs> that's the point of it. So junk journals. Um, also, I think a lot of the journals that we teach in um, when we do Soulfully Wrong Quirky, I don't remember what the front is of this. Oftentimes those are, we consider them to almost be kind of like junk journals too, because we take bits and pieces. We put things together in, you know, interesting ways. And then we bring, we teach a lot of techniques in Soulfully Wrong Quirky. Um, and we end up then turning those things into, into journals. And so for me, this is like, an, you know, some might call this an artist book. Um, I wouldn't. I, I definitely call it more of a um, junk journal because it just has a bunch of different techniques and things that I've tried, um, different things that I'm, you know, different types of paper. So, again, um, to me, this is kind of like a, a junk journal type situation. So I'm just a little flip through that. And I love flipping through them because I'm always reminded of things. Like when we did this, <laughs> the weekend we did this one, I had gold foil just everywhere in my house for like three weeks afterwards. I'm like I just keep finding gold foil <laughs> everywhere. Um, so yeah, to me, these these are like the examples of, um, of junk journals is that I just have a bunch of different things. Um, are you junk journalers out there? Any junk journalers? What do you define junk journaling as? Yeah, Evelyn says the power of words and calling a thing a thing is quite powerful. Yes, it is. Christina says all art should only be defined by the artist. Boom, boom, boom. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Ding, ding, ding. I love that. I think this was one of my favorite pages that I did in that Sophie Wild Quirky session. Oh, I loved doing that um so yeah these are to me these are like the that's what i call junk journaling all right i'll show a couple more here <laughs> maybe let's see here's another one from softly wrong Dropping, dropping, dropping things. Now bear with me. I'm just looking through my stash here to see what I have that that I can show and share with you. I guess, yeah, this one was um, Artsy Marathon. So not so much a junk journal, I don't think. Yeah, I think this was, I wouldn't necessarily call that a junk journal because I started with blank pages and then I moved through filling them up. Um, this was also a junk journal. It started off as a junk journal that I then used as, um, my journal for the artsy marathon in 2022 from where we were going from 21 to 22. Um, but again, you can see kind of like mixed papers, all sorts of things in there. I don't know that I would necessarily call this one 
a junk journal. Nope. I think. Yeah, nah. Nope. Not, I wouldn't call that one a junk journal either. So my point is, I don't do a lot of junk journaling. <laughs> it's not my thing. It's not something that I'm like fascinated by or really truly interested in. But I will take journals and write. Okay. So with that said, let's talk about journaling and my current journals. I'll take a little cup of si sip of tea here. Christina says, I just call mine art journals, but they have anything in them that makes me happy. Christina, you are dropping some wisdom in the chat today. I love it. Thank you. That part, it should make you happy. I don't care what you call it. At the end of the day, it should make you happy. Yeah, that, that right there. Deidre says, I like making journals for folks I know as they're always different than what I make for myself. Absolutely. Deidre also says, I like learning about different methods for creating journals the best. Um, <laughs> Christina says, thanks. I was hoping this age came with some smarts. <laughs> totally. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of looking around my room right now to see if I have any more journals I, like I said many of what I think most people call junk journals I've made and sold to people um, I don't actually come back and use them but I'm going to tell you I follow some junk journalers who do some amazing things y'all amazing things with their journals okay current journals let's talk about current journals I'm just going to pull out my current journals how about that I'm not going to go through them or anything because a lot of what's in my journals is often private stuff, right? But I will have multiple journals going at once. So let's see. Let's pull out my current journals. <laughs> and yes, most of them are just out on my desk at any given time. I also have a really long desk, like two Think of two um, doors that you would find like on your closet, like a, like a, a door for your house. You know, not, not the front door or the back door, but like an inside, like from one room to the next kind of door. I have two and a half of those butted up against each other right now. So I have a pretty long table. OK, so I can have a whole bunch of things on my table at once. <laughs> I shouldn't, but I do. So this is what I call my everyday journal, my commonplace journal um, is what we call it in, in the fountain pen world. Um, and a commonplace journal is basically a common place to put everything. And so in, in fountain pen world, stationary world, um, most people have like what they call, some people call it their everyday carry. Lots of us call it our commonplace journal. And this is not a new term. This term has been around since Victorian times. OK, it's kind of where it comes from. So your commonplace journal is the one that is like your everyday catch all. Instead of having a whole bunch of sticky notes all over the place, just dump everything in there. OK. And then <laughs> because I am who I am. I also have always what I call my uncommon journal <laughs> because if I'm going to have a common journal, I have to have an uncommon journal for balance. Come on. Uh, so my uncommon journal is a little different. Um, it is the one that usually lives like in my purse. It's easy. I can I can literally just take it and pop it in. I could pop this in most back pockets of my jeans. I don't. But it is pretty much about the same size as like my cell phone, right? So they kind of can go together. This is my old cell phone, but they're about the same size, right? So I always have a little, what I call a little uncommon journal. And my uncommon journal is always this style of journal. It's like a little Loistrum or a um, Moleskine, Moleskine, however you say that. Um, it's always a little hardcover. Sometimes I'll go with the, but I go through these really quickly. Like I can go through this in this is probably two months, maybe. Um, and I put tabs where there are like important things to come back to. My uncommon journal, 
I think is maybe what most people refer to as like an original um, basic bullet journal. Except I'm not tracking any kind of dates in it and, and events or anything in it. But I am, I use it for tracking things throughout the month. I use it for um, grocery lists, like lots of lists in here, by the way, lots of listing things. Um, but it is, yeah, it's, it's different than this one because this one is like, if I'm taking a class, if I'm teaching, if I am journaling in the mornings, this is my that's what my commonplace journal is like. Everything gets just dumps in there. This is more like when I need to sit down and brainstorm and make a list of something I'm like, OK, what am I? What is it? And I'll often do a to do list. So lots of these pages will be filled with to do lists. So it'll be like a to do list. And then it'll be like phone calls that I have for the day. I might jot down if I'm on a phone call with someone. I'll jot things down if I had a Zoom meeting with somebody or if I'm uh, vetting a teacher. Um, all of that kind of goes into this, my my kind of like brain dumpy stuff. This is more like journaling in the morning, journaling in the afternoon, in the evening. Uh, maybe sometimes I'll slip some notes into this, but this is more of my creative writing type journal. So brain dump, heart dump. <laughs> That's the best way to break it down in a nutshell. My brain dumps my heart dumps, isn't it, right? So, okay, that's what those two are. And then I have, uh, where is my, oh, well, Okay, it must be in the bedroom. Uh, my, I have a gratitude journal. Every morning I write down 10 things I'm grateful for, and that's the only thing in that journal. I write my 10 things, I say my gratitudes, I close it and put it back. Usually it stays kind of by my bed or near the couch, so it's probably in one of those two places. It doesn't often live in this room. And so that's a journal that I have going pretty much every day. And then I have a journal for, for a class I'm teaching called Lunar Letters. And every new and full moon, uh, I do a session and I teach people how, or not even teach them, but I guide them through the process of writing with the moon for manifesting. So this is kind of like a manifestation journal, but it's specific to working with new and full moon energy. This journal, I run a program called Deep Dive, which is a small group coaching program for my pulp and paint community. And so there's about I have a when that class is running, there's about 10 to 12 women in that. And we're doing a deeper dive into astrology, human design, tarot things. And I'm also moving them through um, really lots of it is about also stepping into your power, owning your voice, speaking your truth. Um, so I make lots of room and space for that. And so this is the journal. This is a little traveler's notebook. It has three, three journals in it. And I use this for my planning of the program in general, in general, but also note taking when I have one-on-one -on -one calls with the ladies. Um, I keep track all of that in here. Um, I mean, it's the kind of class where it's basically a group coaching program. So I whenever I'm doing a group coaching program, I am pretty much tuned in to the women in the program, which is why I don't run a lot of group coaching programs at once, because I am I'm keeping notes. I'm writing little things down that they say so that I can come back to that and I can help them like I can hear what they're saying and come back and help them with things. Um, so this is this is my deep dive journal currently right now. Um, I'm one of my teachers in Life Alchemy Academy, Kristen Radding. You've heard me talk about Kristen. She is um, teaching a class called Life is a Living or Oracle. And in that, she asked us to have a diviner's grimoire 
that we keep. And so this is my Diviner's Grimoire. It's a handmade journal that I made years ago, years ago. And um, so I'm using this to track uh, different readings that we're doing, take notes for class. Um, I'm working on creating a divination system. And so I'm doing a lot of um, writing about that divination system, answering, like tracking my readings um, in that. And so that's my diviner's grimoire. Hi, Nomi. Welcome. <laughs> um, driving and listening to whatever's left. Oh, I'm glad you said hi. Drive safely, please. Um, so those are they. Um, I'm looking around because I know there's a couple others. Oh, this one. So I always have a pulp and paint journal for the year, usually two, but this is the current one that I'm working in. So there's always a journal for pulp and paint and the things that we're doing in that class. So there's that. Um, I always also have a, I'm just going to call it an idea journal because that's the best way I can kind of name it. But whenever I have ideas that I cannot give the space and time to, I dump them into this journal. And even if I end up putting them in one of these other, like the commonplace or uncommonplace journal, I still always bring them here because then that way, when I'm like, like I said, I'm never really short on ideas, <laughs> but when I am, uh, I come here or when I want to be reminded of an idea that I had, I come here. So this is my little, that's what that one is. And then I am a big uh, project, as, as I'm sure you all know <laughs> at this point, if you've been listening long enough, I am also a big project person. I like to do projects. So I have a journal where I'm tracking projects. This is a big project that I'm working on right now. In fact, this journal uh, was a birthday gift to me some years ago from Tiffany and her husband. So um, this one is something I've been kind of working on for, I want to say two years, maybe a year and a half. I don't remember when Tiffany gave me this. So whenever she gave it to me, um, when I was looking for a journal, when I started this project in my mind, I was looking for a journal and I grabbed this one. So I want to say this was maybe my 2022 birthday. So, um, but the point is, it's specific to a project. There's nothing else in here. Everything related to this particular project lives in this journal. All right. So, a couple more. Try not to freak out on me. <laughs> um. I won't pull all of them. Okay, maybe I will. Not all of them, but I'll show you some of what I mean. So I also am very compartmentalized. And what I mean by that, I buy these journals that are just craft journals. Love the paper that's on the inside of them. They come in a pack of like... I don't know, 40 or 50. But every time I'm learning something new for the first time or I'm doing a book study, because in Pull Pin Paint and Life Alchemy Academy, we do book studies, we do deck studies. Um, and then whenever I'm taking a class from someone else, I pull out these little notebooks. These are like my little so, for instance, I have one that I'm working with right now where I'm doing um, a guidebook. I'm writing a guidebook for the pull pin paint deck that I just created. So all my notes for that live in here. Right now we're going through a month of shadow work using the lunar mansions in pull pin paint. And that's being guided by Shay Freeman. And so I have a journal where I'm tracking my lunar mansions throughout the month. So that's that. We did the book Creatrix last year. So all of my notes and all the spreads and all the activities that we did live in this journal. 
Last year, Thomas um, of Hermit's Mirror taught in pull pin paint. He taught um, a class on the Deccans and teaching us how to use the Deccans and work with the Deccans. So this was my journal for that and still is because I reference it a lot. Um, every time, so Kristen Radden, who y'all hear me talk about a lot at, at this point, um, she's one of my core teachers in the Life Alchemy Academy. So she teaches a lot of different things. And one of the classes she created is called the Ultimate Deck Study. And you can use this deck study for, a, for different decks. So I have like six of these little journals for different decks. So this was when I walked through the Ultimate Deck Study using the Muse Tarot. So every time I do a deck study using Kristen's system, I do a, a journal for this, a, a journal for, for that, for that deck study. So those are just a few. I, I have lots of these because this is just, it's easy. I can pop it in my bag. I can grab one. I keep them with the books that they're a part of or the decks that I'm using for them. Like it's a super, um, for me, super simple, super easy way uh, to do this. Now, for some classes that I'm taking from other people, if it's an art based class, I make a handmade journal. I think I showed you one the other day. Um, it had the word sketch on the front. That was for Liz. Mm, somebody put her name in the chat and already I've lost it. She's the watercolor sketch person. <laughs> Why can't I remember her name? It's driving me crazy. Somebody remembers, please drop it in the chat for me. Liz, come on, Liz, what's your name? Bring it up in my head. Okay, anyway, I know some of y'all know her. She teaches urban sketching and watercolor. Yep, okay, so anyway, I sometimes I will make a journal just for the classes that I'm taking. And those will be different from these. So in my mind, y'all, I have a system <laughs> for all these journals. <laughs> and then, of course, I share with you all the other day that I always have some sort of like studio notes going on in my in my world um, or something like a field notes, depending on what it is. Right. So those kind of things are also happening in my in my world. All right. That is probably not all of them, but that's enough. That's enough. You get the point, right? I often have a lot of journals going on. Things I sometimes it works for me in this instance, like this, to have things compartmentalized. Um, and then other times I need to just have brain dump, heart dump space where. So if I had to say that my two main journals would really be more like three, three main journals, because deep dive is pretty prompt. When when deep dive is cycling when it's happening like right now we're we're not in session yet um for this year but when we get into session this journal becomes a really big part of my daily life i look at my deep dive journal almost every day if not every other day and so in reality i'm these three plus my gratitude journal are always in rotation this journal let me see before i open it up all the way if i have any weird things on here. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just say this. This journal that's in here is actually a um, handmade journal, the journal that I made. And so when I fill it, I just take it out and I recreate pretty much the same journal and slip a second one in. And then I have a journal that is um, what's called uh, a life journal. That's actually the name of it. And it has, um, it's by these folks here. I'll hold that up so you can see it. K-O-K-U-O-U-Y-O. And it's basically the kind of thing where you're meant to put in things that you track forever. <laughs> like, you know, this is, my news, age 55 to 59, right? Like, I don't know. It's it's supposed to be like a journal where you track your life. Um, but I don't use it that way. I use it for other things. 
that I'm tracking, but it, I do use it for tracking. I just use it for other types of tracking things. So anyway, I wanted to share that because this journal is mo more of a cover than anything else. Like this comes out of it and I just re remake a journal like this one and put it back in when this one is done. So that's my everyday uh, sort of commonplace journal. And usually there is some pen of sorts that lives in here and I just clip it. It's supposed to live in, in this, but I don't trust this thing to be, you know, sturdy enough. Um, I just don't. So I usually clip whatever pen I'm using onto, onto this thing and hold it in like that. But this always has, then I have a little separate one there. So that's my setup most of the time. And I'm saying that because, you know, it's not always tried and true, but it, but pretty much, pretty much. Okay. How about y'all? How many journals do you have going at once? And yes, I did not mention anything about art journals. Um, because to me, again, I don't really art journal the way I think most people art journal. If I have bits and pieces or I have an idea of something, I'll just grab whatever journal is near me and be like, okay, I'm going to do it in this journal. Now, this journal does happen to have more of a, um, this was supposed to be my word of the year journal. I haven't really done a good job keeping up with doing doing it, but my word of the year story, color of the year is indigo. Um, so you'll see some of that showing up in here, but I haven't really been keeping up with this journal. I feel bad about that, but <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so that's how my art journaling kind of looks. And I usually, yeah, I, I don't art journal, I think, the way most people do. And then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it in terms of like my written journal. And then I do have one other journal um, for my writing workshops. Um, when I do, um, I teach several different writing classes throughout the year, writing into winter, wisdom keepers. Um, prompts and practice coming up this year pretty soon here and I usually do a, um, I used to do summer stories I don't know if I'm going to do run that one this year um, and then I feel like I'm leaving out one of the writing classes I can see it in my mind but anyway so I, for those I have separate journals that I'm using for those so Lots of journals all the time. So when people are like, Kyla, why do you have so many pens? Usually I have two pens per journal. See how I had one here and one on the side. This one, um, my clip, I'm covering it, but there's usually a pen there. Um, and sometimes I even clip a pen onto the top of this. So two. This one is just, I don't usually put pen loops on these because I go through them so fast. Um, but there's usually when I pull, pick the journal up, I'm like, oh, yeah. Where's the pen that goes with that? And then I'll grab the pen for it. Um, so, yeah, I usually have multiple pens and multiple journals going at once. All right. That's a lot of talking. How many journals do y'all have going at once? Talk to me. Tell me. Christina, <laughs> Christina says dozens and more in various stages of making. Christina, you're my people. You're my people. You are my people on that. Damon, you want to chime in? How many journals you have going on over there? Because I know Damon also is like me. He has lots of journals too. <laughs> His just are um, not as like all over the place. Like he'll have, well, I won't speak for him, but Damon has also multiple journals going at once. And then I won't even mention that I have an astrology journal that I keep for myself and I have my iPad and I use good notes. And so I got those notes going on, too. Um, here's my astrology journal that I keep. And this is just for me tracking my own stuff. And I've been debating with, oh, I love this journal so much. I have to just show y'all. It is filled with Tomoe River paper. It's so scrumptious and lovely. I love it. Um, but it is a leather bound journal, hand bound by an artist, a uh, book binder in Italy. And I love this journal so much. This 
leather on here is like the smoothest leather. Oh, just yum. Um, this was a gift to me. So I, I'm a dear friend. Um, and so, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I've been debating whether or not I'm going to bring my human design stuff in this, but I basically use this for tracking uh, different transits that are moving through my, through my, like when my transits are affecting me in a way that I'm like, oh, I need to track that. Um, and then just my own sort of chart, which is where I then come up with lessons and things for how to bring astrology into uh, pulp and paint is by working with my personal chart all the time. So there's that. This is also where I track the readings that I've done. In the very, very back of this, I just have a running list of all the people who have trusted me to read their charts and given me that honor to read their charts. I keep their names in this in my special little astrology book. So, all right, that's really it for sure. <laughs> but I want an affiliate link for those craft paper cover journals, Kyla. Yeah, I will absolutely try to find it. Um, I'm pretty sure that is there. I actually bought these same journals for people uh, in the very first or second sacred maker. So this is now my new go-to for sacred makers journals as well, because um, I like to give a journal that I would love to use. In fact, in the first, I think this might've been the first one, I gave them little baby versions and everybody loved them so much. They were like, we want these bigger. I was like, okay, I can do that. Um, but these were my, this was my first little one that I gave folks. Um, and yeah, just, it was kind of like my little tracking of all the things that we did, little notes and things I got from folks. And it was like me just keeping track of all of the, the different things. I got these cool little, my very first Sashiko needles from Rachel Barclay and her little uh, logo emblem. So, yeah, it's just like a little and then, yep, mm -hmm. brought back a little piece of the lake in the form of a leaf. <laughs> I think there's probably also some mica in here. Um, all sorts of stuff. So I want to say I had some some mica in here somewhere. I don't know what I did with it, though. So, yeah, um, there's mica all over the ground at Sacred Makers at the lake, at uh, Squam Lake. And so when we're there, I always make a point um, to make sure I get some mica to bring home. So, yeah, I'll see if I can find them for you, Nomi, and pop them in the uh, pop them in the chat or in the description of this once we're all done. All right, friends. Um the last thing I'm going to share today, because I'm looking at the time and I'm almost about 10 minutes out from when I want to be done. The last thing I'll say today for letter J, let me go back to my list. Um, oh, I didn't talk about juicing or Jupiter. OK, so I'm going to go a little bit and talk about both of those things. So but before I leave this concept of journaling, what I want to say about journaling is also it is to me one of the most people always are like, how do you really truly manifest? How do you really truly change your life and transform and have these awakenings you're always talking about and feel more empowered and do the things you're doing? Um, how do you do this? Journaling is my number one answer. Journaling is how I see where I am, where I want to go and where I've been. So that I don't keep making the same, repeating the same patterns, thinking I'm going to get something different. So I actually, even having all these journals, I actually do go back to journals. I have moments where I'm like, you know, today I'm just going to sit with some of my old journals and see what have I been calling in? What have I been wanting? What have I been desiring? Do I still want those things? Do I still care about that? Is that still important to me? I also, like I said, heart, heart, heart dump, brain dump over here. Um, because I don't believe our brains are meant to be USB drives, right? They hold memories and they do that on their own with the, without us having to do a lot. But I also don't want to just hold frivolous in, things in my brain all the time. So to me, a good brain dump 
gets that stuff out of there, out of the way so that I can get to the good stuff. <laughs> I can get to the good stuff. OK. Um, and for the heart dump, like getting right, that is for me to see what my heart is feeling, desiring, longing for and wanting instead of trying to hold, like sometimes I feel like my heart's going to burst, not literally, but like I have so many things I want to do and see and the ways I want to help inspire and help people and just, right. And it just, sometimes it just weighs so heavy on my heart that I'm like, okay, I got to get it out. That's what the heart dumping journal is for. Right. And so, <laughs> sorry, I have to pause here for one second. <laughs> Damon, are you saying you have 222 journals going on? <laughs> I'm cracking up at that. Um, <clears throat> I've told y'all before, I think there's a lag time between when y'all post things in the chat and when I actually see it, <laughs> even though I'm look, you know, the chat's right there. Um, that's hilarious. Okay. So all the journaling helps me the heart, the heart journaling, especially like the, uh, the heart dump really helps me get that stuff that is like just wanting to burst out of my heart um, that stuff has to have a place to go you know and so for me where i put it is um in those in my journals and then i can always go back and um see what it is i've been wanting and thinking and not just that y'all when I go back to journals from 10 years ago and I see that I was writing about longing for, desiring and wanting the same thing, the things that I want now, I go, oh, my gosh, I've been denying myself this. I've not done any. I haven't done taken any steps to get this thing that my heart is desiring and wanting. Right. And so for me. That's really important that I am honoring what my heart wants. And sometimes we hear it and we move on with life. For me, I like to hear it, write it down, move on with life. But I know I wrote it down so I can always come back to it. Right. And I personally believe we leave ourselves breadcrumbs when we journal. I believe that when we journal, we are leaving ourselves messages. So I can go back now and look at things I wrote five years ago and I see where I was leaving Today, Kyla, this version of me, I was leaving myself a message. The past me was leaving the present me a message, a sign, a memory, a whatever, right? Breadcrumb. So for me, journaling is that. And I know there are people who like don't journal, don't like to journal. And there's no judgment. I'm not judging anybody. Do you? Some people journal with their art. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a difference. You can say you don't think there is, but I'm telling you there's a difference. You, I can give you five to 10 to 20 different journal articles backing me up, psychology stuff backing me up. And our journal is not the same as a written journal. They're different because what the brain had, what happens with the brain when we're writing versus what happens with the brain when we're making art, two different things where we pull from on the heart level and the soul level. Two different things, I think, when it comes to to writing and to uh, art. And I do think our art gets us to a deep soul level. But I also think when we sit down and I said this before on the day when I was talking about field notes and studio notes, when we sit down with our art, which is why I love soul collage. Right. It's not an art practice. But when we sit down and look at those images that we have curated. And we have conversation with them it exponentially moves the needle to us understanding ourselves on a deeper level, trusting ourselves more and, and feeling a little more authentic and empowered. I firmly, truly believe that I will take that to the grave. So that is for me, what journaling really, truly does. Um, Angelisa says she has one journal. I want to hug you. How do you function with one journal? Annalisa, please tell us your secret. <laughs> tell us your secret um nomi says uh oh that baby journal is so cute <laughs> love it yeah that little one 
It is so cute. I actually have a bunch of these left too. Um, because yeah, I always over, but oh, look at me, y'all. I was looking for the mica. It's right there on the front of the darn journal. Nomi, thank you for making me pick, pick that back up by making your, so there's, I, I glued it down with some clear glue right on the front and look at that, the mica <laughs> with an arrow pointing to it and I missed it. So yeah, there's mica all on the ground there. And there's a little bit of it on my on the front of my journal. Love it. Um, Evelyn says, writing something down is the first step in manifestation, bringing ideas into form. Boom. Yes, that part, Evelyn. Thank you. Uh, Damon said it feels like he has 222 journals. Um, Damon says, there's a reason the words writing and writing are homophones. Um, homophones. Ooh, my southern twang. Uh, writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, and writing, R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. Mm -hmm. You know what? We're going to write that on the back of here for the people in the cheap seats who can't hear what I'm saying and don't see the chat. Writing and writing. I love it. Because, um, yeah, these two go hand in hand. There's like this beautiful recursive reciprocal M relationship between writing about your life, writing your life, and writing your life. Also, if you want to write your life, write your life. Like, Damon, I'm going to hug you later when I see you. Love you. <laughs> and you've said that a thousand and one times. I know you have. I've heard you say it before. You've talked about it in all sorts of programs and things that we do. Um, but I just want to, you know, highlight that because I think that's that's absolutely right. Um, journal and journey have the same roots. Yep. Loving that. Angelisa says, haha, technically I have one written journal, an art journal and a planner. That's about all I can keep up with. And sometimes that's a challenge. Yeah, I keep my planner in my I just do like a Google calendar because I was realizing that. Yeah, a paper planner, as much as I love the concept and thought of it and I lived by them back in the day. I, I went straight digital on that. It works better for me. All right. Last but not least, y'all. Excuse me. A little burping action there. Sorry, folks. I hope that wasn't um, amplified for you since I'm right up on the microphone. <laughs> mm. I love I love what y'all do it in the in the chat with the with the word play. Damon, that's that's Damon's thing thing, by the way. He is my etymology expert, even though I know he doesn't like the word expert. Um, he definitely uh, dives into words. In fact, he does a word dive series in the in the uh, Life Alchemy Academy. So, OK, I want to shift because I do want to talk about Jupiter a little bit. So real quick, down and dirty. Um, when we talk about astrology, um, just see if I can't go out of my way here. When we talk about astrology, there, I'm a, this is like a crash course moment. Okay. <laughs> the moment we're born, there is a cosmic energy imprinted on us. We call that our natal chart. We can see our cosmic imprint using our natal chart, the chart that shows our birth moment. It's a snapshot of the sky. The moment you were born, it shows you where everything was placed in the sky. Where was the sun? Where was the moon? What was coming up over what sign? What what uh, zodiac sign was coming up over the horizon? It shows you where all the constellations were, were, where the constellations were. It shows you where the um, well, depending on the arm of, of astrology you're using, you, you can see the constellations in your chart. It also shows you um, where the planets were, where they were positioned. OK, the planets, the way that I work with astrology, I work with a very archetypal, I'm a certified archetypal astrologer and I work with archetypes. I work with astrology as archetypes. And so the planets are very much archetypes. So 
the way archetypes show up is they are influencing us. They're influencing us. So if we think about the planets, I mean, the sun and the moon, we already know are influencing us, right? Go five days without sun and telling me, you tell me you don't feel it. Okay. Every time the moon is shifting, we're feeling that. Um, which is why we are emotional, moody beings. The moon governs all the water on the planet. Okay. Um, and we are mostly bodies of water humans. Okay. So anyway, all that to say, these things are influencing us again. I'm going to go ahead and tell you astrology is not a, a religion. Y'all, it doesn't require your belief. It's working in you and on you, whether you know it, whether you accept it, whether you honor it, <laughs> whether you deny it, whether you curse it, it doesn't matter. It's working in you and on you. Okay. Um, so in my opinion, if something's working on me to that level, I need to understand it. I need to be able to understand how to harness that energy, how to work with it, how to get in alignment with it. OK, how to be in balance with it. So that's why astrology is such a big part of my work and a big part of my life. So Jupiter, the planet Jupiter and. You can if you, anybody who loves astrology, I mean, sorry, sorry, let me stop. Anybody who loves mythology, you will also always be able to see these things playing out in mythology as well. So Jupiter, king of the gods in Roman, Jupiter in Greek, Zeus, same energy. Right. But planetary names come from those Roman names. So we've got Jupiter. Um, Jupiter rules. Sag, Sagittarius. Um, and it is most talked about, like when we talk about uh, Jupiter, we're mostly referencing it and talking about it in relationship to its expansiveness. It is the planet that expand that expands us. OK, things like. Um, it's it's also some people talk about it as the planet of luck, the planet of plenty, the planet of abundance. Um, showing us where we need to grow and expand in this lifetime, where we are meant to grow and expand and have abundance, where we can um, find luck and favor and fortune. That's all Jupiter. Jupiter is all about expanding your knowledge, though. Right? It's not just about oh expanding because, you know, sometimes abundance can be too much. All right. One ant versus a thousand ants. That's an abundance of ants. Tell me which one is better. <laughs> right. You come home and you got ants in your kitchen. One or a thousand. Which one you want? You see. So that's what I mean when I say abundance can be. Sometimes it can be too much. Sometimes we don't want all that. OK, so um, also in astrology, we have personal planets and we have social what we call uh, personal planets versus um, public planets. That's not the right name, but my main, my brain just went sideways. Um, often sometimes called generational planets as well. Collective planets. So Jupiter is actually one of our bigger social planets. And so things like gratitude fall under there too. hope falls under there. Um, but it is a planet that is about having possibility and potential. Um, oh, there was something else I was going to say about the luck part. Um, it's also about it's, it's where it shows us in our charts where we are most optimistic. It also shows us our capacity for being optimistic, because here's the thing. Again, I say we are all 12 of the signs. You're not just your sun sign. You're not just your moon sign. You're all 12 of the signs. You have all 12 of these signs moving in and out and through you in a different recipe than everybody else. Like we all have our own little recipe. So we all have Jupiter tugging on us, influencing us. And usually because Jupiter is a slower moving planet, people born in, in a certain generation at a certain time often will have this, not often, will have the same Jupiter, Jupiter sitting in the same place in their charts. 
just like with anything else. Um, oh, let me say this also about growth. Jupiter is not just about growing for the sake of growing. It's also about mental growth, spiritual growth, intellectual growth, mental, same thing, but I like to say the word intellectual there too. Everything in astrology is also about energy and energy can be in balance or out of balance. It can be on the low end of the spectrum or the high end of the spectrum or somewhere in the middle. So when I talk and teach about astrology, I look at the spectrum of that energy. I look at is that energy expressing itself on the low frequency or the high frequency? So when Jupiter is like in balance, it's about optimism. It's about good luck. It's about spiritual and mental intellectual growth. It's about expanding. It's about um, abundance and uh, expansiveness. And I'm probably repeating myself right now because I'm just coming off the top of my head right now. <laughs> I didn't plan this and I don't have notes. So I'm just coming off the top of my dome. But it's it is that that um, planet that reminds us of our bigger purpose here, not just our purpose to ourselves and our private sort of purpose, but our our bigger purpose. That's all when it's in balance, when it is out of balance, though, OK. Jupiter is also associated with excess. So. We could say I'm all up in my Jupiter energy with my fountain pens. Mm -hmm. I said it. I don't need anybody else to point it out to me. I see it. <laughs> I know I have a lot of fountain pens, a lot of pens in general, a lot of art supplies in general. Excess. Right. So Jupiter, when it's out of balance in us or when we are out of alignment with Jupiter, let me say it that way, because Jupiter is always trying to be in balance in us. But when we are out of balance with our Jupiter energy and our Jupiter placement, then we experience things like excess. We start having where we become overly optimistic or maybe a better way of saying that is like blindly optimistic. We overindulge. Do you really need to have a fourth piece of that chocolate cake? Do you really have to eat the whole bag of potato chips, Kyla? <laughs> we start to overindulge. Do you really need to buy another fountain pen? Uh-huh. Yes, I do. I'm going to go ahead and answer that question. I do. I absolutely do. <laughs> but my point is, those are some of the ways that you can know you are out of alignment with your Jupiter energy and your Jupiter placement. Um. Another thing, and we, we often talk about that is the shadow side of Jupiter. All right. So when you're doing all of that overindulging, excessive behavior, when you are blindly optimistic and irresponsible. I'm going to look at you and say, let's look at where Jupiter's sitting in your chart. Let's also see what's transiting around that. Let's 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 look more because we all help you get it back in alignment. OK. So wherever we have Jupiter, it shows us how we express um, our abundance, what we do when we have abundance. So think about it. When we have an abundance of something, we can be a little more generous with that. Right. When I have a little extra money. Yeah, I'm happy to give a little extra to somebody because I have extra to give. So when we have more of something that expansive Jupiter, you know, Jupiter energy, when we have more of something in our lives, we tend to be more generous. So wherever Jupiter is sitting in our in your birth chart, in your natal chart, it shows you how you are. Des um, I don't want to use the word design. Um, what your tendencies are. Let me use that language. In terms of being generous and generosity. And so. Sorry, I don't want to just be looking in my tea, huh? Um, <laughs> and so it also shows us our ability to tolerate things. Our level of tolerance is also a part of Jupiter in our natal chart. And I think another piece is in astrology, we have what are called houses. Each house represents areas of life. The house where Jupiter is sitting 
gives you more information about how that planet wants to express itself in your life, where in your life it wants to express itself more specifically. The other thing that Jupiter and I, for those of you who are in my in my classes, pull pen paint, um, anything where I'm talking about astrology, lunar letters, any of that. I don't think that I've ever talked about it in the way I'm about to say right now. So I'm going to make myself a little note to bring this to the group when we have our astrology immersion coming up here. But. Jupiter is also showing us our capacity to improve our lives, number one, because growth, expansion, tolerance, optimism, right? Those things are required. <laughs> I think of tolerance and patience in the same, put them in the same, they're cousins to me, right? You have to have an immense amount of patience with yourself to grow, to learn, to change, to live into your wisdom. You really do. So Jupiter also shows us how we might go about improving our lives. That energy where it's sitting, that's a big, um, I'm going to say key. Yeah, I'll say key. Uh, it also shows us our ability to trust people is also because optimism, right? Trust is in a lot of ways, trusting other people requires a certain amount of optimism. It really does. When we stop trusting people, we have to ask ourselves, what is happening with my optimistic side? Because there's a certain amount of optimism required for you to be like, yeah, I know this person is going to be do right, behave right, act right, say the right things, do the right things. We're, we can trust it. There's a certain amount of optimism in that, in, in being able to trust other humans. So and when our trust gets broken, when we get betrayed. Right. And if it happens to us multiple times, if there's a pattern of betrayal. It makes it very difficult for us to trust which makes us instantly out of balance with our Jupiter energy. And as much as I'm sharing this with you all, I'm also talking to myself in this moment. I'm noticing because I have some, I have a lot of betrayal on the path behind, in, in my past. And so I'm having to, to really think about that here in this moment, Urgh! stretch moment, <laughs> growth moment. <laughs> um, I want to draw the symbol for Jupiter really fast here for us. And we're going to start wrapping up here. Let me find a piece of paper. All right. Jupiter looks like a 24 to me. So it's like a number two coming into a number four four like that okay um so this is the sign for jupiter this is the what we call the glyph for jupiter as in like hieroglyph the glyph okay so this is the little symbol for for uh jupiter and this if we break it down you've got this and you've got this that's really what Jupiter, it, when you break it down, okay, that's really what you've got. So it's almost like this crescent, crescent moon kind of energy here with a cross. And so I took, in, when I did my certification in archetypal astrology, one of the things one of the teachers talked about is how this cross represents matter or material things like the material world i didn't know i was going to do a full teaching on this but here we go matter or the material world is what this cross represents okay this crescent energy is about 
receiving or receptivity, either way. Um, receive I before E, except after C. Y'all know I'm struggling right there, but okay, receive. <laughs> this is about receiving energy. Okay. So one way you can think about Jupiter is it's teaching us how to receive in this material world, but not always about material things. It's about raising our awareness, expanding our awareness. So I'm just going to put that here. Expanded awareness. So if I if you don't walk away with anything today, Jupiter is not just about expansion and growth and abundance and love. It's about expanding your awareness. Expanding your awareness. OK. A um, couple other little tidbits about Jupiter. I'll drop that just I should have said at the beginning. Maybe I don't know. Uh, Jupiter takes about 12 years to go around the zodiacal wheel all the way and hit all 12 of the signs. So 12 years is a long time to make that cycle around. It takes 12 years. Think about it. Sun, 30 days. Okay, roughly. The moon moves through every sign every two or two and a half days, roughly. So I'm just giving you that in, in perspective, right? And the Mercury, Mercury and the moon kind of have a similar orbit. Not exactly the same, but close. But the moon is fast. Every couple of days, it's in a new sign. Boop, 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 which is why, you know, we always feeling different every few days. Like we just because uh, the moon is moving fast. She's doing stuff up there. The sun a little slower than the moon. 30 days to make it around that whole wheel. So now take that what we know and go. If the moon if the moon is in Capricorn for two and a half days and then it moves to the next sign. And then you have the sun in Capricorn for about 30 days, roughly. Okay. Then you have Jupiter. It takes 12 years to get around this whole thing. So it's moving slow. Moving slow. Okay. I just want to name that. Um, I don't think there's anything else more I want to say about it. Um, those, oh, I feel like I would love to, and this is why I work with creatives. I would love to, and I'm going to do this with the charts that I've read. I, at this point, I'm, I'm not quite at 200 charts, but I'm darn close um, to the number of charts I've read professionally. Um, but I want to go back and look at how many of those folks that are creatives, especially the abstract artists, where their Jupiter placement is, because Jupiter is also like our ability to think abstractly, to work abstractly. And so I'm I'm like, these are the things that get me excited about astrology, like looking for patterns in people like, OK. How many of my creatives have Jupiter in the same place? And are those people abstract artists like that's the kind of thing I love to look at and dig into. So anyway. My point is Jupiter can tell us a lot about our ability to be generous, our ability to be optimistic. Um, it can show us where in our lives we have the greatest capacity for optimism, generosity, abundance, growth, um, raising our awareness, expanding our awareness, all these things. All right. I'm going to look in the chat, answer questions if there are, and then we're going to wrap up for real, for real. So Christina says Monday's eclipse passed us at 95 percent and you could feel the static energy. Right. Thank you, Christina. I love that you said that. Here's what's real. The cosmos. Are not just up there for looks. Like they're literally changing and shifting the energy down here on our planet. <laughs> like we can ignore it and deny it if we want to, but it's real talk, y'all. It's real talk. 
Um, Nomi says, Sag Moon here. I like to say I have a rich inner life. Sounds better than all over the place. <laughs> I love it. Our Sag folks, are all of us have Sag in us. So we all have that all over the place energy. Okay. We all have that rich inner life energy in us. Learning where it is in your chart is powerful. Knowing that your moon is there um, is a powerful thing to note. And once you start to look at, okay, what does that mean? Then you can start to suss out some things in your life, right? You can start to see patterns and tendencies and preferences. But also what is true is Sag. I love Sag because Sag is where we have our roam and wander energy is what I like to say. Roam and wander. That's our Sag energy, right? Roam and wander energy. I love it. So we're, wherever we have Sag in our charts, those areas of life are where we would most benefit from understanding what it means to roam and wander. One of my favorite quotes when I think about my Sag folks is anybody who has heavy Sag energy, like Sag sun, Sag moon, Sag rising, or if you have like more than three or four planets in Sag, um, all those who wander are not lost. That is a that's a Sag energy right there, baby. Um, Nomi says, oh, I'm a little behind, but I need to learn more about Jupiter and recovering from betrayal. Ooh, you and me both, Nomi. We can work on it together. <laughs> David says that being the glyph for Jupiter brings new light to this year 24. Oh, Damon. Yes. Expansion. Mm -hmm. And the world is being stretched at this time. We absolutely are. We're being stretched and we are being asked to actually expand our awareness, which is why just being fed information is no longer enough. We have to expand our awareness, expand where you get your information from, expand how you uh, see the world, how you've previously seen the world. Um, lots of things to think about in that. Thank you, Damon, for that stretch. The world's being stretched right now in every way, for sure. And remember, I said Jupiter is also about mental and spiritual growth. So we're being stretched, I think, in both of those ways, too, as a collective, because Jupiter is a collective planet. That's the word I was looking for earlier when I was saying social, but same social collective is a collective planet. Right. So really important. Um, and Jalisa says astrology sounds very complicated, but interesting. <laughs> uh, what's lovely about it, Angelisa, is it's actually not as complicated as it sounds in the beginning. The more you learn about it, the more you dissect it and just work with little bits at a time, um, you actually start to realize you've literally been living your chart all of your life. You just didn't know it because you didn't have language to put to it. So it's very much like learning a new language um, for things you've already been doing, but you didn't know you were doing. So, yeah, but you're right. It. The very first time I got my astrology chart, I was like, what is this gobbledygook that I'm looking at? Mm -mm. Um, right now, Jupiter is in, ooh, pop quiz for me. Um, I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to guess. Hold on. Let me go look at my... Hold on. Um, I always have my little transits thing. Um, also, oh, thank you. Nomi says Google tells me that Jupiter is in Aries. So that's some foundational stretching. <laughs> oh, then moves to Taurus on May 1st. Yeah, um, that sounds about right. I think that's I think that's pretty much right. Um, and let's talk about that for a quick moment. So. Again, archetypally, if we look at Aries, Aries starts the zodiac. OK, so Aries um, is that cardinal energy that sort of let's get things going kind of energy. When it moves to Taurus, it's moving to a, an earthy energy. So Aries is fire. Taurus is earth, that earthy foundational energy. And not only is Taurus earth, it is fixed earth. It's like. I'm staying right here where I am, stuck, stuck, stuck energy, but also sustainable energy, also about building foundations. 
So lots of good stuff. Um, Angelisa, I do. It is called um, Intro to Astrology for Creatives. And it's not currently open, but it will be opening um, pretty soon here, like in a couple of weeks, I think. I don't have my calendar up and in front of me, but I'll definitely mention it here again um, before the end of the month. So it might actually be a couple of weeks that is coming. I'll have to. Yeah. So I'll let you know. I'll mention it here. All right, friends. So I am going to wrap up and say thank you for hanging out with me again for almost two hours, <laughs> which I know. I got to stop doing that to us, to all of us. That's crazy pants, right? Um, so I will, I'll do better. All right, loves. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad I got to hang out with y'all and talk journals and journaling and show you my current journals. Didn't get to talk about juicing. We'll move that to the end of the month. And I really loved talking about Jupiter because this is astrology is my element. I'm in my element when I get to talk about it between book binding, fountain pens, and astrology, tarot, and human design. These are my these are my things that I love to talk about. So um, I will see y'all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Y'all have a beautiful rest of your now. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. I don't have a time yet for tomorrow. Let me um let me do that thing that I do at the end where I tell you what I'm gonna talk about tomorrow. And while I'm doing that, I will try to find my calendar to see if I put a time in here for myself and just didn't have the bandwidth to put it in the mighty in the um YouTube. So yep, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Central. Come on back and hang out with me. I don't have a time for Saturday yet, but tomorrow I will be live at 9 a.m. Central. Um, I don't know whose idea that was, but uh, <laughs> apparently that's what's happening tomorrow at 9 a.m. And tomorrow is letter K. <gasps> letter K. Ah, I'm going to talk about craft text, and I think we might make a book using craft text. Let's do that. That might be fun. I don't have. Oddly enough, I don't have a lot of Kayla things. I've got Kyla. <laughs> That's all I can come up with. Kyla um, and craft text. So you all come with some K letter words for me. And I'll try to think of some between now and tomorrow as well. That's probably why I didn't put it up yet, because I couldn't think of K words to put in the title. Um, so I will figure that part out between now and tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. But I think we're, we're due for making something. So why don't we make us um, a nice something tomorrow using craft text? I don't know what yet, but probably you didn't just meet me. It's likely to be a journal. I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow. If you have some craft text, please bring it. I'm even thinking that we might, I might do something like make a little bag for a deck or something like that. I have this little tiny Lenormand deck um, that came in a bag that's way too big for it. But I'm like, what if I use craft text to make a little something? So maybe we'll do that or make a journal. We'll see. Thanks for being here. Love y'all. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> I see your note, Deidre. Catch up. I love it. Bye, y'all.